Hello Biotechnicans, this is Dr. Farhan Zameer from Biotechnica Bangalore. For today, we'll have a, a very interesting video on omics which could be explained because this is a buzzword which is now in trending. So we'll try to understand. Let's dive in. Welcome back. So for today, we would look into a very important terminologies because every day in science, there are new new buzzwords coming attached onto a prefix and suffixes. So this buzzword is omics. Now let us try to see why is this omic making so big noise? Okay, so in this way, um, so omics refers, so let us try to understand what exactly is this omics. Okay, omics refers to a late Latin word which means that analysis of a larger data. Now, when you look into the history of uh, science or biology, there were very small data sets. Now, uh, from 1987, it was realized that the number of data sets or the replicates which were being generated was so huge and was not simply able to document on a paper. So people thought this variable number of measurements has to be systematically arranged and hence a new terminology called omics was being you know, generated or it was being coined. So let us try to see what are the various kinds of omics which are normally used in terms of bioinformatics and other um, data sets at large. Now before I go into omics, let us try to also understand the basics of uh, molecular biology or cell biology. Now, if I take up a cell, give me a minute. So if I take up a cell, so this is a cell and from a cell I have a nucleus and inside the nucleus I have chromosomes. Now if I open up this chromosome in a nucleosomal model, I get the, the proteins and the nucleic acids. So the nucleic acid has been bound with a set of proteins which are uh, normally called as histones and then uh, you have the other set of nucleic acid which is the DNA. Now this is a combination of protein and nucleic acid makes a complex structure to actually store a huge number of data what we call in terms of nucleotides and nucleosides. Now using all these molecular machinery what people thought is why don't I apply technology onto it okay and then try to see what advances can I still make in ter terms of this omic approaches. So people thought of integrating electronics with especially in electronics that is microfluidics with that of molecular biology and now they have created a beautiful system which is called as organ on a chip or human on a chip. So if you look into this slide or this circuitry, so this circuitry talks about the entire metabolism which is going upon in a cell and then I can still looking into the circuitry and the various impulses which have been generated, I can tell a given patient is suffering with what kind of diseases or disorders. And that's again uh, in terms of uh, regenerative medicine, people are also talking on the communities of cells wherein how do I create totipotentic cells, how do I create pluripotentic cells and how do I uh, create you know, um, uh, you know uh, lymphoidal cells. So, uh, so in all these conditions, you know new new terminology, every day new new terminology is getting uh, you know, eluded and let us try to see what exactly are these new terminologies. I'm sure that, you know, you everybody in molecular biology knows the central dogma of molecular biology, which starts with the two different components. One is called as the classical central dogma of molecular biology and the second one is called as the modern central dogma of molecular biology. So if you look into this particular pathway here, if I look into this particular pathway, so this particular pathway refers to the classical central dogma of molecular biology. Now the classical central dogma of molecular biology started with uh, the DNA, DNA getting transcripted into RNA and RNA getting translated into proteins. So the study of the DNA was coined as genomics. The study of RNA and its regulation was termed as transcriptomics and the study of proteins was called as proteomics. Now, uh, 
for the last 10 years, you know, this genomics, transcriptomics and proteomics was the only three terminologies which was used in the uh, central dogma. But however, because of advent of uh, more amount of science and more amount of uh, data, people thought we cannot just restrict the central dogma only for these three components and hence uh, two more new components were added. And these two more components were labeled as epigenetics and then metabolomics. Now what are epigenetics? So epigenetics or epigenomics is a branch which talks about certain factors which actually control the DNA. So factors such as miRNA, factors such as HDAX, all these are factors which are in turn controlling the DNA replication. So hence, you know, uh, the generational characters or the hereditary characters has to be studied at an epigenetic level and hence it has been very important in studying the various hereditary disorders and especially even in terms of autoimmune disorders now people are trying to connect epigenetics and genomics and then trying to elude the association or the interaction between epigenetics and genomics now what we have learned is epigenetic there are certain factors which we call it as epigenetic factors which will control the dna and dna will in turn gets transcripted into RNA and RNA gets translated into proteins. But however, these proteins, again, they undergo a process which is called as metabolism. There are various pathways. We have actually discussed this in our previous video. That is, we, we spoke about metabolism, we spoke about anabolism and catabolism. Now, as a product of metabolism, anabolism or catabolism, we have metabolites, anabolites and catabolites. So in turn, I have a series of metabolites which could be either undergoing upregulation or downregulation, creating or actually limiting or determining the rate limiting step in a given reaction. And all these things are put into a special domain and this domain is called as metabolomics. So what is the, the new central dogma or the modern central dogma? It starts with epigenetics. From epigenetics it goes into genomics. From genomics it is transcriptomics and from transcriptomics it goes to proteomics and then goes on to metabolomics. So this is the major difference between the classical dogma of central, uh, uh, you know, central um, dogma of molecular biology and the uh, modern central dogma of molecular biology. Let's try to see the next slide. Now, what do I study in genomics? So as we have already seen that genomics is the, the, the major concrete of studying DNA by doing DNA sequencing, by genetic profiling and also by mapping the genetic components and then our DNA technology then understanding the structure and functional analysis of the genome. Now genome is the entire complete set of genes are called a genome and understanding the structure and functional analysis of a genome might be from bacteria, might be from plant or from humans. So depending on that, I have human genomics, plant genomics or bacterial genomics. So this is in terms of genomics. Now the next part is the transcriptomics. Please remember the regulatory component I cannot study in terms of DNA. So what we do is for the regulatory component, we always rely on the RNA. And when we talk about RNA, it is the mRNA which is of a, a major use. So here uh, using transcriptomic analysis, it helps me to understand the gene expression profiling. And also it helps me in understanding the transcriptional regulators and master transcriptional regulators. And very importantly, the splicing mechanism which takes place between the introns and exons could be studied using transcriptomics. Transcriptomics. Now, what do I study in proteomics? Now, as we know, the data which gets a transcripted from transcription to translation, I have an end product and this end product is my protein. A very, very fickle molecule okay, and very, very intelligent molecule. So this can actually create, uh, can be a boon or also could be a bane. So here, understanding this protein becomes very, very crucial for understanding and identification of proteins, quantification of proteins, very importantly, modification of proteins in terms of post-translational systems becomes very, very crucial. And hence, putting everything into this one umbrella is called as proteomics. 
Then, as I you know briefly described what exactly is metabolomics, in metabolomics we are actually trying to profile the individual metabolite which could be either an anabolite or a catabolite and we also see what are the various intermediates of metabolism which are being produced. Now, when I talk about metabolism, we cannot exclude hormones and their signaling systems. So, all the signal transduction systems comes under this particular metabol uh, metabolome and the study of all this into one consortium is called as metabolomics. Now, we also said that in central dogma of molecular biology, there is a new domain which is called as epigenetics or epigenomics which mainly refers on to the non-coding sequences which are actually influencing the coding part that is the DNA. Then the influence and this, uh, the influence and the related factors could be also studied and very very important modification which takes place on DNA that is called as methylation. Now this methylation could be again uh, predetermined by certain other factors such as uh, microRNAs, we also call it as miRNAs and HDACs. So all these play a very important role in uh, the DNA methylation processes and studying this into one umbrella is called as epigenetics or epigenomics. Now this was until the central dogma of molecular biology. Now as the data sets got increased, so for, for creating a, a perfect data set and to add, keep on adding much more data. So what people thought was, let us try to create compartments and these compartments has led into a new kinds of omics terminologies and let us try to see what are these new terminologies. So the first terminology is called as variomics. So in variomics, we talk about the copy number variation which is called as CNVs. So we talk about the copy number variation and uh, also in genotype typing or a ribotyping or in serotyping, we look into what are the variations at a molecular and submolecular or sub submolecular levels and these variations could be studied becomes very very important in disease diagnosis and treatment and hence this comes into a newer umbrella and this umbrella is called as variomics. The next terminology is called as phenomics. Now, since uh, everything uh, in genetics has been always dependent on the genomic component and the phenotypic characters. So studying the phenotypic characters which includes the morphological characters, biochemical characters and physical trait of a given organism and its evaluation is called as phenomics. So it creates a very important establishing link between genetics epigenetics and very importantly environmental factors. So here in phenomics we study a close association of an organism with its habit and its habitat and this comes into a newer domain which is called as phenomics. Now the next one and very interesting is the ionomics. Now in ionomics as we all know that there are various kinds of metals and minerals which plays a very very crucial role either in terms of enzyme activity or in terms of protein activity. Here we speak about the element profiling, the biochemical regulations and the involvement of these ions say for example you know the presence of iron and uh, its regulation in uh, hemoglobin synthesis. Or I can also talk about the zinc fingers, I can talk about the various elements which are actually interacting with a, with a larger macromolecule or a larger biomacromolecule. So this entire component comes into a newer umbrella and this is called as ionomics. Now as everything got uh, you know advanced and uh, you know much more um, you know in a futuristic sense, new terminologies such as regenomics has come into picture. Now what is regenomics? Regenomics is mainly towards the plant biology wherein we talk about the plant regeneration dedicated to a database which contains entire transcriptomic data and its regenerational data. Now this becomes very very advanced information for most of the bioinformatics data wherein we are able to clone or edit at the entire plant level in an entire phenotypic level which can create genotypic variations. So hence it becomes a multi-query analysis which can lead into the expression network, gene regulatory networks and very importantly we can also study a single cell expression profiling of a given cell and this uh, is mainly towards the plant biology and also sometimes also translated towards the, the human cells which is called as regenomics or uh, regeneration studies. 
Now, this is a, again new terminology which has, uh, you know, pure sciences, applied sciences and allied sciences all put together, which is called as pathoimmunogatomics. So, if I decipher this particular word as patho, patho refers to pathology and everybody now is towards microbiome. So, what people say is, what you are is what you eat. So, hence, understanding the gut microbiota becomes very, very important. And here comes a new domain which associates gut microbiome with that of the pathological conditions of a given individual. So, hence, you know, you have the patho and gutto. So, and the, the third terminology is omics. How do you study the interaction of the microbiome towards its pathogenesis or towards the health? And this is mainly by using various omic approaches, whether it could be genomics, transcriptomics, epigenetics, metabolomics or proteomics. All this put together is called as an omic approach, wherein we are talking about the, 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 the pathology of a given individual by analyzing the gut microbiota. Here is a very important point to be remembered. So now, even if I am suffering with a disease, there are few set of microorganisms which are responsible for it. And even the reversal of the disease, wherein I can bring down the bad bacteria and bring up the good bacteria, this is also possible by various components of prebiotic and probiotics. So all this put into one consortium uh, is called as pathogatomics. And we are very happy that uh, our group was the first group uh, to, to term this uh, terminology which is called as pathogatomics or we also call it as synthetic gatomics. So this is a paper which has also been published in uh, Journal of uh, um, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, methods, in, methods in Microbiology which has been published by Elsevier. So here uh, the entire consortium becomes very very important. So hence uh, now what we need to remember is it is not just the pure sciences, applied sciences or allied sciences. It is a combination, it is an amalgamation of all the three and this is leading into the generation of new new terminologies. Now, for this video, I think, uh, you know, um, understanding these new new terminologies is, uh, is sufficient. So as a, a continuation video, I would also try to make you understand uh, various newer terminologies such as pharmacogenomics, pharmacogenetics, toxicogenomics, uh, toponomics, then you have trilonomics, then you have connectomics, and then you have interomics. So all these new new terminologies will be discussed in the next continuation video. Thank you very much for watching in. And if you like all these kinds of videos, please let us know so that we can create much more content for you so that you know, um, your interest creates motivation in us. And this is how together we'll make a, a, a civil society for a betterment of science. Thank you very much, all biotechnicians. Farhan Zamir signing off. Thank you.